Okay, welcome to the February 22nd uh, regular uh, Borough Council meeting. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act pursuant to public law in 1975, chapter 231. Said notice was sent to the Home News Tribune and Star Ledger on February 17th, 2021 posted in Borough Hall and on file in the clerk's office. All requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied. Do I have to read the part about being a... Uh... No, that's just the notice. Okay. Okay, so um, just to get started, um, I understand that we passed um, a very solemn and sad milestone today. Um, we've lost over half a million people to the coronavirus pandemic. So I would like to open the meeting by taking a moment of silence to remember all of the lives that have been lost because of this pandemic. We will never forget. Please join me in the flag salute. Dan, you got the flag for us? I was counting on you. Do you want to give me a second? I'll go run and get mine. <laughs> Dan, you always have the flag for us. Where's the flag? He's not listening. No. <laughs> Dan, where's the flag? You always have the flag for us. I lost it. I'm sorry. Could you get it up there for us? Uh, I don't think I can find one. Hold on a second. Let me go get mine. Okay. Okay. Where's Rob Donnan when we need him? You always have a flag, Dan. Here we go. Sorry. It's Here little. Okay, please join me in the flag salute. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Jackson, may I please have a roll call? Councilman Delia? Here. Councilman Hirsch? Here. Councilman Kendall? Here. Councilwoman Rasmussen? Here. Councilwoman Rubin? Here. Council President Koskowski? Here. And Mayor Bush is absent. Mayor Bush had to work tonight. So I'm sure he's good. I, I'm sure he's lurking somewhere on one of the many platforms that this meeting is available on. So um, okay. Um, can I please have a motion to open the agenda session? I move that we open the agenda session. Do I have a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the agenda session is open. Do I have any items for the agenda session? Uh, yes, I have an item. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I would like to remove ordinance 2021-5, our um, updating the uh, snow removal ordinance and uh, postpone it to um, introduction for uh, the March 8th meeting. Okay, thank you, Dorothy. And I would like to add um, the Metuch and EMS report. And I was thinking we could put it um, right before the Metuch and Parade Committee report. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Do I have any other items for the agenda session? Okay, um, may I have a motion to close the agenda session? I move that we close the agenda session. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the agenda session is closed and we'll move right over to Pete Fairclough from the Metuchen EMS. Hi, I'm gonna hand this over to one of my cadets to, uh, to give my report for the day. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. My name is Amenya Goyle, and I live at 12 Moraine Road in Edison. 
I am 17 and a senior at the Middlesex County Academy for Allied Health and Biomedical Sciences in Woodbridge. I've been a cadet with Metuchen EMS since August of 2020. I am here tonight to present our first report for 2021. Our last report was in December, and since then, the number of COVID cases has dropped significantly. As an organization, all of our adult members have been able to get the vaccine, and I get mine on Thursday. This continues to be a challenging time for a volunteer organization. We have had two squad members contract the virus, both from community spread and not from a first aid call. Overall, our, our, our call volume is about the same as this stage of last year. We continue to get help from the community. The Olive Press Eatery has not charged us for meals since February of 2020. We have been given snacks from the Cub Scouts and sandwiches from Jersey Mike. We have also participated with Metuchen Arts Council in the Windows of Understanding project. We will be talking with the Human Relations Commission on February 24th. There are links on the Arts Council website. Our recruitment has been going very well and we have a small waiting list. We have, have had four members who have passed the BMT exam in the last two months. We have not been able to rent our halls since March 2020. Fortunately, we had a successful fund drive, so we should be able to stay in business for at least one more year. We would like to thank all of the Metuchen residents and some not from Metuchen who have supported us during this time. We would like to remind everyone that they should sign up to get the vaccine. Even if you've been vaccinated, you should still wear a mask in public and maintain social distancing. If you have any questions, I will answer them if I can. Thank you. Very good. I would like to say, um... It's impressive that you uh, chose to join the uh, the Metuchen First Aid Squad during the pandemic. I think most people would be afraid to do that. So congratulations to you. Very good. I'm proud of you. And I know I know you go to a great school because I know Chloe went to that school too. <laughs> do you know Chloe? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And she was a senior the year I was a freshman. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? It's good news on the recruitment. I'm uh, happy to hear you have people uh, looking to volunteer with the EMS. That's great, great work. And uh, that's it. Do you have anything else that you want us to know before we go? No, good for now. Okay, great. Thank you so much. We appreciate everything that you do. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, Patricia Schneer from the Metuchen Parade Committee. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for having us. Uh, this is actually the first time that the Parade Commission is reporting to the, um, the council. Uh, and actually the um, Parade Commission, uh, well, first of all, I'm the 2020 chairperson of the um, Parade Commission. Uh, we have a new Parade Commission chairperson for 2021, who's Ellen Regan, who is also on the call, I believe I saw her. Um, also from the Parade Commission attending tonight is Lynn Mueller. And I don't think there's anybody else from the Parade Commission here, if I can see everybody, but, um, but we're here. So um, I'm just going to give you a brief update. Um, you know, parades have really been a part of the Metuchen fiber for a long time. Our Memorial Day parades are over 90 years old. Um, so it's definitely part of our culture of, of uh, Metuchen. And of course, like so many other things in 2020, our parades were quite different than what we had envisioned um, when the ordinance was created. Um, but you know what? The real spirit of the Metuchen community shined through um, both uh, the, the Memorial Day Parade and the Winter Festival um, parade activities um, were truly collaborative events. And um, that's the kind of thing that makes Metuchen very special. So um, I'm just going to go through briefly. You should have already gotten the deck um, that I sent um, earlier. Um, and so I'll just take you through a little bit of, um, of each of the things that we're doing. So first of all, just for background, um, it's a, there was an ordinance in October 2019 passed um, by the Borough Council that established the Parade Commission. And that commission included um, five people or five members. Um, and the way it was set up that there's three year terms for each person on the commission, but they're staggered so that of course, not everybody's gonna drop off on year three. Um, so we have different, um, uh, different terms. And one person on the commission is required to have um, either military experience or um, current uh, military involvement. The focus for the parade commission 
is really on the Memorial Day Parade, um, which also includes the Memorial Park Ceremony and the art contest that's done every year and the Winter Festival Parade. Uh, so I'll start talking about um, what happened with Memorial Day. Um, of course, that was in May, so very early on in the COVID-19 lockdown. Um, and the Parade Commission is essentially acted as an organizer for the day's events, um, but it was not without a lot of volunteers and a lot of people pitching in to help to make everything happen. So there was the art contest, a rolling parade, and um, the Memorial Park ceremony. Uh, and this is all done on a bare bones budget because we really had no idea what was happening day to day. So it was um, something that we um, were just sort of rolling with the punches um, and ended up spending very little resources on uh, financially. Um, the rolling parade included um, all of our um, uh, key departments of Metuchen, the fire department, the police department, the EMS, uh, the public works department. Um, and there were pres um, residents of Metuchen lined up and down the streets watching the parade. And this was great because it was really done on short notice. And we have Rob Donnan from the fire department to thank for pulling that all together. Um, but we had thousands, over 6,000 views on Facebook of people watching the parade. So people were definitely appreciative um, that something was happening. And um, that was followed up by the Memorial Park Ceremony that is um, really led by the American Legion. And so they did a, a really nice job. It was outside, everything was um, appropriately socially distanced. Um, and again, almost um, 2000 views on Facebook for that as well. So um, <clears throat> both of those events, um, I think really did a lot to, to show that we were still going to manage to do something in Metuchen despite the lockdown. Um, a lot of children participated in the art contest. Over um, 100, actually 134 kids submitted posters, which the American Legion team judged and um, selected winners. We had the finalist posters printed and put them in our um, windows along Main Street. Um, so that people could walk along Main Street and see um, see the artwork from the kids. So again, a, another part of Metuchen where the businesses are happy to cooperate and hang up the posters. Um, I do have to say 134 kids might sound like a lot, but in years past, um, we've had um, close to a thousand children participating. So um, now that uh, COVID and how we're dealing with it is a little bit more routine, we may have a lot more participation in 2021 than we did in 2020. I'll switch over now to the end of the year events, um, which was Metouch and Lights and the Winterfest weekend. Uh, really everything we did, we were very much focused on maintaining uh, a safe uh, level of involvement and activities. And so we did things a little bit differently this year. Um, the entire uh, events around what would normally have been the Winter Festival Parade um, included Metuchen lights, um, the tree lighting, the menorah lighting, and then Winter Fest weekend. Um, because we were already um, in the groove of dealing with COVID, uh, we actually had a pretty significant budget and we had um, several donors who participated um, and the budget for this, for all of these events together was about um, $32,000. Uh, <clears> so from a touch of lights, this was where we really got a lot of sponsors, a lot of excitement. Um, what we really wanted to do was turn um, the area of Main Street between the train station and Middlesex Avenue into a destination for people. Um, we wanted it to help our businesses. We wanted to, you know, just give our community something that was nice. Um, and certainly bring other people into Metuchen without creating an event where we'd have thousands of people blocking the streets. Um, and I think we got a lot of great feedback. Um, we, you know, did something that we've never done before. And I think it was, it was pretty successful. I hope everybody had an opportunity to see how beautiful it looked. Uh, we also got a decent amount of press attention. Um, in fact, uh, 
uh, a reporter from the Star Ledger showed up at the, the menorah lighting. Um, and so um, we, did get, we did get pretty good press coverage. And again, it was because of the collaboration. We used the Art Council's press list um, and, you know, we just got a lot of help from uh, social media, from the chamber and, and other organizations. So um, we could be really thankful to that. And also um, we had the, so there was part of the budget paid for all of the lights. So there were a lot of different levels of lights that you saw in town. And then the um, DPW with the MDA um, was responsible for decorating all of our lampposts, which also added a nice element to what we were doing. On, uh, at the beginning of the uh, sort of uh, time that we had the lights up and we were sort of uh, acknowledging the winter holidays, uh, we started with the Christmas tree lighting on November 29th. And that um, was streamed through uh, Channel 15 and um, a Touch and Media YouTube and the Borough Facebook page. Uh, and this was all to um, just try to keep as much, uh, as much safety involved with this, these events as possible, but still letting everybody see them. So we worked with the um, youth choir of Rise Up Chorus um, and um, they participated um, through videos that they had had from um, years past. And they also had some people present on the plaza as we lit the tree and the Metuchen Fire Department um, brought Santa in as sort of a little surprise. So we had like a photo bomb or video bombing with Santa. Um, so it was all fun and, um, and certainly another example of how we pulled together as a community to create something nice. Uh, we did the menorah lighting then on December 10th. Um, and that was, um, we worked with the um, Neve Shalom and the Temple Emanuel congregations. Um, they brought in um, some of their, their kids um, who were um, new, new uh, bar mitzvah kids. Um, and so it was a very, um, a really nice ceremony that some great speakers that evening. Um, and of course we had the star ledger there the whole time taking pictures, um, which was great because then of course we invited her back to what was coming for the weekend following the menorah lighting. Uh, and that was our winter festival weekend. Um, winter festival weekend, we were really trying to um, draw some attention and fun to, to downtown and have a, a point of all the lights and the activities. And so we worked primarily with the chamber. Um, the chamber had a presence um, on Main Street all weekend by Kai's. Uh, WLD um, radio station sent a, G a DJ every night. Um, we even had snow falling in front of what's the scoop compliments of the um, rec department. Um, so it was, again, a really, it was a fun atmosphere. Um, we got really lucky. It was uh, beautiful weather and things were really busy um, on that Friday night. Uh, so uh, all in all, I would say that the events, despite everything that we needed to manage, um, were pretty successful. Um, I think 2021, you know, we've learned a lot <laughs> from 2020. Um, so we'll make some changes to the things we did. And I mean, I don't think any of us thought we'd still be in the situation that we are now, um, but we did it last year. And so um, we'll take what we've learned and um, we'll bring the same sense of fun and bring our, our sort of parade activities back to Metuchen again in 2021. Uh, so our intention obviously is after we get through Memorial Day, uh, we're going to come back to the council and try to get on a regular schedule of um, giving an update in the middle of the year, um, every year. Um, so hopefully we'll see you guys uh, back in June. And we're happy to answer any questions that you have now. Thank you so much uh, for that, um, that synopsis of how you handled last year. It's like you became a commission and, of course, had the pandemic whipped on you <laughs> immediately. <laughs> and, uh, and so um, I guess what I'd like to say is that I feel that the uh, parades really do anchor sort of the year in Metuchen, right? Like between the Memorial Day Parade and the uh, Holiday Weekend Parade. And it's something everybody in town looks forward to. I know the businesses, but uh, when I was a business, I really looked forward to the parade. It meant everything to be able to get everybody downtown. So I just want to thank you for figuring out a way to still make it happen, uh, to give residents a, a feeling of some sort of continuity, even in the 
you know, space of this horrible pandemic. And uh, we look forward to seeing what you come up with for next year. Does anyone have any questions for Patricia? No, but I have a comment. Ahead, so I wanted Dan. to thank the rec department for providing snow in front of what's the scoop, but we've had enough. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's it was thank fore you. foretelling, huh? Exactly. Thank you very much for everything you guys do. Thank you for all your help. I mean, everybody on this call, you know, we've dealt with and, and has helped us. So thank you all for helping us make this happen too. It means a lot to us. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions, comments? Um, I think just all the events went very well. Um, even though we missed the normal events, um, I, th I think it was pretty clever, all the things that you did, and uh, it, it uh, enhanced uh, the season. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so when, when we approved this commission last year, I, I think it was either to the mayor or maybe to you, uh, Linda. I remember saying, this is, a, this is a big job, like to put on these parades. This is a big job for this committee. And then, of, of course, you get a complete curveball of COVID thrown at you to completely make you change and pivot on everything. So I'll just congratulate everyone on the, the committee that helped put uh, everything you described together for last year for the residents. I know we appreciated it. We were... My family and I were out on Memorial Day parade. I think I saw Dan downtown. We, we met, we ran into each other. We actually were following along and we, we saw it at one corner and then we said, well, it's gonna be coming around the other way. Let's go down the street. And we caught the second line. So it's a lot of fun and it's sorely needed at that time in May, so thank you. Thank you so much, Patricia, for coming tonight and everybody on your team who came to, to fill us in on what's going on. We look forward to working with you in the upcoming year. Thanks for having us. It's been great working with everybody from the borough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Okay, uh, so the next thing will be public comment. And I'm gonna go ahead and just share the, um, if you want to make a public comment, you can come onto the Zoom meeting. Um, and this is the information to, to uh, join our, our meeting, the meeting ID and passcode. Um, you can also send an email to uh, publicmtgcomments at metuchin.com. Um, I should have put that up there too, I'm sorry. Um, it, 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 just real quick, um, just so everybody knows, there's no S in under after comments. It's just comment. Oh, on my sheet it says comment. I'm sorry. I know. I know. It was a big thing today. Okay. Okay. So, um, do we have any um, emails? No, nothing. Okay. And let's see if we have anybody. Um, if there's anybody who's. Uh, See if there's any hands raised. I'm sort of taking my time to give people the opportunity to sign on if they want. <laughs> and Council President, if, if I or Acting Mayor, if I may, I believe it's star nine as well. If someone has called in via the telephone. Oh, to raise your hand. Okay. To raise so your hand on the phone, and you want to raise your hand. It's star nine. You hit star nine, and that will raise your hand, and then I can see. Um, but I'm not seeing really even anybody from the public. So. Just give it another moment. Mm -hmm. No email, Susan? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. John checked raise hands one more time. Nope. Okay, so I think we will close this portion of the of the meeting. Um, but you know, we'll be flexible. So if somebody shows up, we do have some public comment also for our, our uh, ordinance. So let me stop sharing this. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's move on to um, the ordinances, Dorothy. Okay. So um. Ordinance 2021-01, uh, this is the uh, public hearing for that ordinance. 
And um, if Susan can uh, present the affidavit of publication. Mm -hmm. The affidavit of publication stating that said ordinance 2021-01 has been published one time in the Home News Tribune according to law on January 14th, 2021. Okay, um, I move that the affidavit of publication be received and filed. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, um, Susan, please read ordinance 2021-01 by title only. Give me time. An ordinance amending section 110-4 definitions in article one, title purpose, definitions in part one, general provisions in chapter 110, land development, section 110-7, exceptions from site plan review in article two, zoning permits in part two, applications for development in chapter 110, land development, amending section 110-48, applicability in Article 12, Minor Site Plan Applications in Part 2, Applications for Development in Chapter 110, Land Development, Amending Section 110-64, Density, Coverage, and Bulk Controls in Article 16, Zoning Districts, Zoning Map, Zoning Schedule in Part 3, Zoning in Chapter 110, Land Development, Amending Section 110-110, Permitted pro uh, Projections in Article 23, Supplementary Regulations in Part 3, Zoning in Chapter 110, Land Development. Amending Section 110-112.6, Accessory Structures in Article 23, Supplementary Regulations in Part 3, Zoning in Chapter 110, land development of the code of the, of the borough of Metuchen to revise requirements relating to structures used for outdoor dining areas in the B1 Central Business District and D1 Downtown Development District. Woo! Well done. Well yeah, done. That was, uh, a mouthful. Yeah. And that's only the title. Yes. <laughs> Actually, the explanation is a little... Uh, it's a little less dense. Um, Melissa, do you wanna give us just a brief overview of, um, of what the, this ordinance is changing, what this amendment is changing? Sure, it's been a while. I was like, oh, let me remember. Sorry. Um, because we had, to, we had to postpone it last meeting. The planning board also um, reviewed it and was uh, supportive of the change. This has everything to do with facilitating and helping our businesses downtown um, in terms of uh, their, their their ability to put awnings and things like that on. It's just changing, it's increasing the, the, the surface area. So it's not as restrictive. Um, it's only for the downtown businesses, restaurants in particular. Um, and this is just another um, way of helping to facilitate the need to expand outdoor space as a result of the pandemic. Thank you. Okay, so at this time, um, I'd like to open the public hearing um, on this uh, matter. And it, this is just pertaining, this is public comment pertaining just to this ordinance. So if you have, uh, would like to comment on this ordinance, please join us uh, at this meeting. Um, you should see the meeting ID and passcode on your screen right now. Um, and as always, you can also email us at public meeting comment at metuchen.com. And that's MTG, public meeting MTG comment at metuchen.com. Okay, I see uh, one person raising their hand. Hold on, let's see. Isaac, I see you raising your hand, but I'm not seeing you on my list. So can you unmute yourself? Yes. Oh, go ahead, thank you. Thank you, uh, Acting Mayor. Um, I didn't plan to speak tonight, uh, but because of the ordinance that came up, I just thought it was fitting uh, to give our thanks on behalf of the Downtown Alliance and our members uh, to the borough 
uh, for being so responsive to the needs of our businesses throughout this pandemic. Uh, and I can tell you uh, from my direct experience working with uh, many of the restaurants downtown, uh, a dozen which are working to adapt to the winter uh, months, um, that this is going to be a crucial tool to help them move forward. Uh, so I'd like to urge you to approve this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Just give another minute to see if anybody else has anything to say. You can join us on, uh, on the passcode that you see on your screen, the meeting ID and passcode that you see on your screen. Okay, not seeing anybody else joining the meeting at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and close the public hearing portion of this ordinance. Uh, Councilwoman Rasmussen. Okay, I move to pass ordinance 2021-01 on second reading and publish according to law. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, and does anybody, I mean, before we go ahead to the roll call vote, does anybody have any questions or comments? Okay, Ms. Jackson, can we please have a roll call vote? Councilman Delia? Yes. Councilman Hirsch? Yes. Councilman Kandel? Yes. Councilwoman Rasmussen? Yes. Councilwoman Rubin? Yes. Council President Kaskowski? Yes. Councilwoman Rasmussen? Okay. Um... Ordinance 2021-04, um, this is the um, public uh, comment um, and public hearing for this ordinance. So um, Susan, if you can uh, read the uh, affidavit of publication. The affidavit of publication stating that said ordinance 2021-04 has been published one time in the Home News Tribune according to law on February 11th 2021. Okay, I move that the affidavit of publication be received and filed. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so okay. that passes. All uh, right, so Susan, please read the ordinance 2021 04 by title only. An ordinance to amend the code of the borough of Metuchen, chapter 185, entitled Vehicles and Traffic, section 185-34, handicap parking to add a designated location on Rutgers Street. Okay. Okay, so that uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Melissa, do you have anything to add to that? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> The handicap spot on Rutgers Street. So, uh, okay, so at this time, I'll open the public hearing uh, for this ordinance. This is the uh, ordinance 202104. Um, you can, again, if you have uh, something you'd like to add or a question, um, the public, you can sign on to the Zoom meeting. You should see the login information on your screen right now. Just give, give people a second to sign in if they would like to comment. Okay, I don't see anybody raising their hands. Do you have any? Did Isaac raise his hand? He did last time. I think he's still okay. raised. It's still raised. Oh, Isaac, did you want to talk again? Or did I just forget to lower it from the last time? Yeah, I don't think it was yeah, it's gone now. Okay. Okay, it doesn't look like there's anybody who is uh, looking to comment. So, um, so uh, I'm going to close this portion of the of the hearing. Okay, um, I move to pass ordinance 2021-04 on second reading and publish according to law. Do I have a second? Second. second. Ms. Jackson, can we please have a roll call vote? Councilman Delia? Yes. Councilman Hirsch? Yes. 
Councilman Kandel? Yes. Councilwoman Rasmussen? Yes. Councilwoman Rubin? Yes. Council President Kaskoski? Yes. Okay. This one has been removed. Okay, I move that um, up to approve the cons uh, communication consent agenda items A through D. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, reports of council members. Uh, let's start with uh, Councilwoman Rubin. Uh, thank you. Um, my report for the um, Accessibility Committee, um, I'd like to announce that on February 24th, Wednesday at 7.30, we'll be doing a, a very um, informative program called Growing Up with a Disability, and it will feature um, the, the best practices for inclusion. Um, in our community and people will have a chance to share their own personal stories about growing up with a disability. It's on Zoom and information about the Zoom access uh, can be found on Facebook for the Accessibility Committee. Um, also on Wednesday, the Human Relations Council and the Arts Council has, um, I'm sorry, my computer's just about to die, so I'm fussing with that for it, a minute. Um, is putting on Windows of Understanding, the next in the series of presentations that, that um, focus on a variety of issues in our community and corresponding art. Um, this week, the presentation is focusing on trauma um, and it will, and public health, which couldn't possibly be more relevant. So if you're interested in attending that conversation, it too will be on Zoom and the Facebook information is available on the Facebook pages for the Arts Council and the Human Relations Council, as well as the website for those organizations. Um, and the next um, HRC public meeting will be on Tuesday, um, March 2nd. It's hard to believe that we're gonna be in March already. Um, it will be on Zoom and accessible to the public as well. So I hope if anyone has an interest in joining us, um, we will have our new members at that meeting that we just, um, that the mayor appointed at our last council meeting. So I'm looking forward to, to that meeting. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, Councilwoman Rasmussen. Okay, um, I have a report from the um, Environmental Commission. We had our meeting last week. And um, I just want to uh, just let people know, number one is that we have a Twitter account and also an Instagram account. So if you wanna know what's going on in the environmental world of Metuchen, just uh, check those um, social medias for whatever information um, that we are trying to convey. And also um, we had a continuing discussion on our plastic grant update, which um, due to the pandemic, we've not been able to finish that up, but we're working on um, ideas for implementing it. And um, for the single use plastics like straws um, and the plastic bags that you would get from restaurants. So we're still working on that. And also we had a discussion about the Centennial Park grant update. And uh, we had a discussion about um, what kind of plantings to use. And um, also the fact that we're not going to be using fence, you know, fencing around shrubs and trees anymore because um, having a meeting, we felt that it would be too cumbersome to upkeep, upkeep the fencing. So we're gonna do without the fence. And um, also we have some upcoming events that we're gonna try to work on. So because of the pandemic, we feel that we cannot have a regular Earth Day like we would normally have of getting people together and either doing a cleanup or planting some things or um, having awareness of how to recycle properly. So we're thinking of having an online Earth Day challenge where each week leading up to April 22nd, which is Earth Day, the Environmental Commission would propose certain activities online with prizes, such as packets of native flower seeds for those who would complete the challenges. And the challenges would be environmentally related. So that's something we're still discussing and there'll be more information um, coming on that. 
Um, also, we were discussing um, possible methods to advise the public of changes in the recyclable materials, pickup days, and concerns about improper recycling by some residents. So what we were actually discussing is the fact that, that we are only recycling plastic number one and plastic number two. Um, also, it appears that there are numerous residents that package their recycling in kitchen garbage bags and put that in the recycling bin. That is a big no-no because when it gets to the recycling center, they don't accept that. So it's kind of a burden on the recycling center where we bring our items. All recyclable should be rinsed out and individually put in. You don't bag them in a plastic bag that will take a thousand years to disintegrate. So that's number one. Um, also, we were talking about, um, um, yeah, uh, we were also talking about sustainable Jersey, which of course the borough was certified. And last year, because of the pandemic, we didn't really um, um, do any of the actions and we're certified for three years. So this year we're gonna start looking at uh, some of the items that may be up for renewal that we can do some work on. But you know, some of this work really depends on us working together, getting residents to participate and all. So we're gonna try to figure out um, some of the things maybe we could do where it's just really, um... did you guys lose me? No. no. Okay, cause something else came up in my, on my computer screen. But anyway, as long as you can hear me, that's fine. Um, and also um, we were addressing the rain gardens uh, that the Rutgers um, Cooperative Extension uh, helped um, put here in Metuchen at the high school and at Edgar School. And some of the plantings had um, died. So I think in the spring, they're gonna be um, plant, replanting something new. And um, let's see. If there's anything else here? Um, okay, that's uh, that's uh, my report for tonight. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Councilman Kendall. Yeah, the um, uh, rec committee met last week. Um, today marks week number one of the Mayor's Fitness Challenge, which is a friendly competition against our neighbors at Edison. Each week, one winner will be selected from all those who submit their weekly minutes of activity to the Recreation Department. It's simple, from Monday to Sunday, just keep a log of minutes that you are active and submit it on Monday to be included in the weekly raffle. For further information, contact the Recreation Office. Uh, and this event is co-sponsored by the Metuchen Chamber of Commerce. Um, this year, in lieu of a spring egg hunt, the Recreation Commission is working on a socially distanced uh, bunny photo op event on, sun, on Saturday, March 27th. So please uh, follow for more details. Spring sport cl sports clinics are currently open for registration and we are working on virtual as well as hopefully in-person summer classes. Uh, so please keep checking the borough website for more information. Um, the Historic Preservation Committee um, didn't meet you know, last week, but they wanted me to uh, make sure that we that I spoke about the resolution that I think we're gonna be voting on later tonight um, to accept the $15,000 grant from the New Jersey Historic Trust. Um, the funds will be used to hire a consultant who will work closely with our committee, the administration and the public to develop a historic preservation ordinance, which um, I think is something that's important for the borough for this coming year. Uh, a key issue to be addressed is the extent to which we as a community are losing our historic resources um, I think, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a robust discussion, I think, within the um, administration, the, the uh, council and the community to develop an appropriate ordinance for the borough moving forward. Um, so uh, we look forward to that discussion over the coming calendar year, and we hope that the council will pass the resolution that we're going to be voting on tonight. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Hirsch. Thank you, Linda. Um, so the Metuchen Municipal Pool Commission met on February 10th, 
and um, discuss ways to make the opening of the Metuchen Municipal Pool that, um, possible this year. And we have agreed that that is a, a solid goal of ours. And we've been working with um, the uh, administration, with Melissa and, and, um, and Becky on finding ways to make that happen. Um, we also have a resolution on this evening, uh, Resolution 2021-77, in which we are, we're hoping to authorize the solicitation of proposals to do an RFP for the pool concessions contract. And I would appreciate your support for that so we can move forward with that. Um, our next meeting of the Metuchen Municipal Pool Commission is uh, March 9th. It's a Tuesday at 8 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. And Councilman Delia. Uh, I have nothing new to report tonight. Thank you. Okay. Um, do you have a report, Mr. Murphy? I guess, no, <laughs> you're reading, so. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Borough Administrator Pearlstein, do you have anything for us? Nothing to report, thank you. Okay, um, so first just to report as councilwoman, um, I would like to report um, that um, the library is remaining closed uh, uh, because of the pandemic, um, but they are still offering um, the curbside pickup. So you can uh, reserve a book and then they will bring it out to you um, and put it in your car and your trunk. It's contactless pickup. Also, I really urge you to go onto the Metuchen uh, Public Library website. They're, even though they're closed, they are offering so many different programs. There's virtual book clubs, there's yoga classes, there's everything. There's um, take and go activities for the kids that you can pick up as part of the curbside service. So um, please uh, check out the Metuchen Public Library website to see all of the wonderful things that they are creatively offering uh, even uh, during this time of social distancing and, um, and staying away for um, staying away from each other, but you can still get stuff. And Dan Hirsch just reminded me that I should let you know that you can get tax forms <laughs> at the library. Okay, and then the other thing I'd like to do is, um, so uh, I also um, am the liaison to the parking authority and um, uh, Ed O'Brien attended his resignation. He um, decided to step down um, and I just really wanna thank him uh, for his many, many years of dedicated service. He um, has served Metuchen in so many, many ways. And I, I think that, um, when he uh, started to uh, work at the parking authority, we kind of forced them into it, uh, you know, cause we, we needed an experienced voice, somebody who knew something about uh, the parking authority. This was a few years ago um, to help us through um, some of the larger projects that we were gonna be having. And Ed stepped up once again to help um, touch in. And um, so I just really wanted to recognize him uh, for always being there and for always being willing to, uh, you know, serve with his uh, time, his knowledge, his, his like vast historical knowledge of uh, the goings on in Metuchen and, um, and to, you know, just thank him for his service. Um, so, um, and with that, um, we are welcoming Gary Wade into the new um, role of being the chairperson for, for the parking authority. So welcome Gary. Um, and then I guess the last thing I, I want to say is that um, we started out uh, this evening, uh, and this is sort of with my mayor, acting mayor hat on. Uh, we started out the evening talking about the fact that as a nation, we've gone over um, half a million people who have died um, because of the coronavirus. Um, and I don't know that I just I was watching the um, the, the memorial that the um, the president was having earlier on TV, the Kendall Light Memorial for all the people that have passed. And I wanted to let you know that um, in Metuchen, we um, have lost eight residents also. So we have also lost um, neighbors and um, we've, we're over 800 cases of uh, coronavirus. So um, I think a way for us to um, sort of honor the people who have um, paid with their health and their lives 
um, with this pandemic and also to honor the people who are on the front line, I strongly urge you to continue to recognize social distancing. Please do not gather. Please make sure you are staying masked. When you have the opportunity to get the vaccine, you can get the vaccine. Um, I know I was out at the last meeting because I got the second vaccine and I had um, side effects from it. They lasted a day and you know, it, it just, whatever I went through with a few side effects, totally worth it to make sure that, you know, not only am I protecting myself, but by becoming vaccinated, you're helping to protect the people in your community. So, um, so just continue to uh, practice all of the um, things that you need to do to keep this uh, pandemic at bay and to hopefully keep in touch in, um, you know, we're actually, I think we're starting to trend down this week. On, so I want to continue to do that. And, um, and that is my report for tonight. Okay, um, Acting Council President Rasmussen. Okay, um, I move to approve new business consent agenda resolutions R-2021-74 through R-2021-81. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, they pass. Okay, um, I make a motion to approve resolution 2021-82, resolution authorizing payment of the bill list in the amount of $843,802.31. Do I have a second? Second. Who seconded? Harry. Harry. Okay. It sounded like you, Dorothy. <laughs> I have to watch you guys now because I can't tell who's doing it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Yes. Okay. And my favorite motion of the night I make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Meetings adjourned. Thank you so right. much. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Good, night, everyone. Well. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Be safe. Good night, everybody.